in this video, I'm going to focus on something extremely important, which are the data structures. And this is a quite advanced item. But you can see here, this is nothing fancy if you look at this one here. But if you carefully look here, what we have here, we have the data. And this is where the data set is. This data set consists of completely different values as what you're normally used to. You can see here cost, profit, revenue being shown here. And all of this is matching one of these items and we could select different items here as well you can see as well this is the reason why the labels are different because here this is supposed to be the seventh value which would be sunday but if we go in here you can see here any value end of the week so we're not using any labels anymore we're giving our own structure in here this is quite useful for very advanced features so let's start to explore how we can do this in this video, we're going to focus on understanding data structures in Chart.js. And this is probably a very underused or underutilized item in Chart.js. This is very powerful once you understand the use or the functionality of it. So with data structures, basically you can uh, structure your data or your data set, the specific values, you can break it down and put in more items in there. So they're like cross matching. And this is very, very useful. All right, let me show you exactly what we're going to do. We're going to use this first. First of all, we go to chart.js3 and we're going here on this chunk of code. We're going to copy all of this code here. I want you to copy this. And if you would like to understand the, the uh, JavaScript of this, please check out this video here that explains it all. So just paste this in here and once you did that i'll just move the title in here for myself once you save refresh we have now our chart so we're working right now with chart 3.5.0 that is the latest as of now so once we have this i want you to go to the chartjs.org documentation and here i would like you to click on the general and then you select your data structures so data structures are by default set on the primitive. And this means that we have very similar to a bar chart right now. We have the data here and then we have the labels here. So if you go in here, we have here our labels, we have our data, and it will create eventually the X and Y based on these values. But we can change that and we can change it on a level. For example, we want something else matched in here that would be uh, connected. So. Let's look at that. Well, how would we be able to do that? So you can see here, we can create, instead of a primitive, a object data structure, where it has basically more values. And this is very familiar. If you're familiar with the scatter chart, it basically uses this structure. Where we have the X, Y, and if you're very familiar with the, uh, not the scatter, the other one, let me double check. What is that? The bubble chart. They're using the X, Y, and R. And R stands for the radio, the radius which means the size of this, the bubble or the point. It can be increasing the, by the amount of pixels. So that's basically how this works. But of course you can do something else because maybe you don't want this, you want to name them yourself. Here we have like this, here, or we can just name them or nest them within each other and give it specific values. So let's play around with this a little bit more so you can understand the use cases for this. So for example here, we want to change this. We want to create here a nested value very similar to this here. We have the ID, or we can say here maybe the X value. So we can basically remove the label here. And I'm going to put in here the following. So we want to create here a nested version. I'll just put in here. And I'm going to remove all of these excess data here. So what we're going to do in here is, for example, here with the X value, and X would be the specific item here that we want to match. So we say here, we can say here Monday, and comma, and then we could put in here a Y value, or we can put in something else. As you can see in here, there's even a command like nested, and in the nest we could do something else as well. So we could say here, if we would do, um, we can do here nested as well. And then you can give any kind of value here. For example, here would be sales. And in this sales here, which is basically a nested item, we can 
to nest this, we need to use again these brackets here. We can get the value. Uh, we can get the value here, or what we could do here is uh, finance. We can say cost plus this, comma, basically we would say here uh, revenue would be 25. And then we would have here something else, let's say the profit that would be $1,000 dollars for any of your currency that you're using so we say here 1000 in profit all right so we have your three structures here immediately and with this you can see here basically what we're doing if you just break this down nicely you will see this is how this is an organized structure oh, we can do it like this and if you will see this structure now you start to recognize that this is how chart yes is basically built on so we can put it here and there we are and then we have this one here and if you look here for example the options we have options scales etc etc this is basically the same but now in a real data set here and what we could do here is for example we have here everything and then we could say here we have another value or we have another item in here so we can just copy this just put in here and this could be Tuesday comma and here we could just change it let's say here will be cost I have no idea I'm just making it up as I go now we'll give some other values as well we have the cost there comma uh, this could be revenue and let's copy a few more and this is let's give this we are now on here Friday that will be Friday and finally here all right so we have here and this would be profit and here will be uh, end of the week i'm just making it up as you can see here so we say here zero 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 this would be supposed to be saturday but it's a profit so we can say here maybe uh, cost is five thousand and the revenue is uh ten thousand and we have a profit of 5,000. I'm just going to give it some random numbers here just to make sure that you can see the differences. Of course, you will not notice this unless we pinpoint that specifically. So we have this here, and let's see, we have this another one here. Two, five, all right. This will be two. This will be 3,000. This will be three, five. 4,000. Uh, okay, then we can just leave that one. I will just give this. This will be 6,000, 5,000, 4,000, etc., etc. So you can just make up your own numbers. I'm just playing around here a bit. All right. So if we now save this, you will see nothing happens, of course. And the reason why nothing will happen is just simply this. Let's make sure that this bracket is at the right location. All right, save this. Now if we refresh. It breaks it however you will start to see there's some adjustments already working here so what we need to do now is and the reason why already it starts to understand is because of the X here but we didn't assign it yet because we can remove this as well but it knows already if you would do this you will see this will overrule it or oh, sorry it doesn't even overrule it. it will just put it beside the other probably because of the X here but this could be anything else this could be uh, any value if I do this we just change this any value save that refresh you can see right now it doesn't understand it and the reason why is first we had the X so it would understand to grab that one but now we have any value but this any value could be anything and this is quite useful if you have for example multiple data that you want to track all right so what we can what we can do now is with this data structure we can start to assign it in here change this here even if you would have more data sets this can play, you can play around with that as well so let's start and look at it here in the options so what we're going to do now in the options is basically this we need to parse and then in the option they have the term parsing and with the parsing you can assign what will be where so with this 
basically the x we want to assign this to the x so we want to understand or let chart js know clearly that this part here will be set on the x labels so we can say here we'll say parsing and parsing or parse to parse something would mean to make something readable so we're parsing basically we want to make whatever we parse readable for our x-axis and of course y-axis if ever we have the data points here so what we're going to do is the following we're going to assign now where we want to have what so we want to say here the x-axis key so we want to make sure that now the x-axis will be what exactly any value so we're going to copy this put it in here now you have to make sure that this is a string you can see here as well. So we put in here, same quotation, comma. And then another one, what we want to parse is the y-axis key. Understanding which value we need to extract here. You can see here, there's like a nested value, and we have also a nested value, but our nested value is not anymore the term nested, but it's called finance. So we could grab here, depending on which item in the chart all together here so let's say here we're going to get finance dot cost and if you realize this eventually this is very sim uh, similar to using any kind of arrays or objects if you want to pinpoint something so we say here dot cost and by doing that once we did this we're done here we can save this refresh and now as you can see we're now grabbing certain things here of course here we have to do one more thing which is removing the label. And I'm talking about the label and I'm referring to this specific labels here. I'm going to remove this because we have this one here. And this is right now uh, in conjunction with. So they're together with each other and it creates confusion here. So, oh, I don't want to do that. But then I want to refresh it. And now you can see here, we get here now our values here. And these values are 2000, 3000, etc., etc. Friday is 6,000, and often it goes down. So Friday is 6,000, and then it goes down. So imagine you would like to have different ones. Well, say, you say uh, I would like not only have the finance cost, but I would like to have all the revenue costs. Or we just want to have the revenue cost. So we save this now and refresh. You can see now the chart changes, but in reality, we didn't change anything in the chart except of adjusting some parts of the data. We are shifting our data from one to the other, and this is very powerful because with this you can do so much more for example assigning tool tips with information in here you can do it in all of these here and what i really like of this is you have a cross match here so if you would change the data on one item it's all matched together because basically these data are uh, connected to each other so if this would go down here or if you would change the order eventually this will not be the cost will not be only fixed but all the matching data in here as well and that can help you to organize your chart in a certain way that you want so i hope this was a bit clear there's so much more because we could do here and i have another video about that and if you want to watch that video i highly recommend you because we'll go deeper in this imagine you have a link here imagine you have here because you want to add up a link a website link here we can say here www.google.com and of course, in this one here, we don't have a link. Put it here, comma, and this will be, let's say, chartjs3.com. So they're all connected with each other, depending on what we get. And then if you would click on it, you will get the exact link, and you will be directed to that link. This can be done. If you're curious about how to do this linking structure, check out the other video. I have it in the comment section, and now so I'll make sure uh, there will be a pop-up here and also in the screen itself it will show up that link because with that you will become far more advanced and have a better understanding of these advanced data structures.